Oh, I love today's passage. Paul says, in light of all of that that I just talked about for 11 chapters, now I'm inviting you to respond. It's great. You got to read with me. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bible Time. Craig here. I am so pumped that you're here today. Romans 12. Uh, I just love the beginning of this chapter. I have preached on it many times. We've made it through so much of, man, we've made it so far this year. We've made it so much so far through Romans already here in December. Um, this is a good journey that we're on. This is, this is a good investment for your time to spend time in God's word. And so I hope and I pray that um, your investment in, in joining me on Bible time has been fruitful to your soul has been beneficial to your spiritual life and um, that you are truly growing your relationship with Jesus. I mean, that's the point. If you're new here, you don't know what I'm talking about and I just wanna say uh, welcome. And would you leave a comment and let us know where you made it from and who you are, where you're from and um, how you found out about Bible time. But if you don't know what this is, it's just a place to read the Bible together. I'm not really here to teach primarily. I mean, I, I kind of do and will, and I'll share some thoughts, but that's not my primary purpose. My primary purpose is simply to just provide an, an avenue for you to see and hear the Word of God, and also for you to kind of like see how I cut up my, my Bible when I read it, and, and really, but it's not about me, but so that you will take these practices and put them into practice yourself. I'm only really going to do about, well, 16 or 17 more of these videos, um, and then it's all on you. So... Let's jump in. Um, this is like right where he's turning the corner. It's Paul's traditional practice to share share theology, share truth, and then at some point in the letter to say, okay, so what are we going to do with that? What, like, what does all that mean for practical life? This is that turning point in this letter. So he says this, I appeal to you, or I, I beg you, I... I, I'm like desperate for you to listen. I, I beg you, therefore, brothers, uh, by the mercies of God or in light of all of that mercy that I just talked about, um, it, it, in view of all that mercy is, is really what it's saying. Is like, like put it like this. this. This term right here is actually like him saying, um, based on those first 11 chapters and everything that I just said in those 11 chapters if you think about all of that content now I'm asking you to respond to it so think about everything that that I just talked about and now I'm asking you to respond so I, I beg you I appeal to you in light of all of that mercy and all of that truth to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. This term right here, spiritual worship, it's um, it's an interesting one, like the actual wording in the original Greek language. Um, it's 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 a form of worship which is is what sacrificing was, um, and so, but the word spiritual can also be translated like reasonable or it's the worship that makes sense it's it's the logical in fact this word i me tell you what this word is in the greek this word is logikos logikos it's where we get our word you guessed it logical it makes sense. One version says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice for this is your reasonable response. And if you know me, you know that this, this term is like my life message. that I believe that, that God 
is inviting all of humanity and has been inviting all of humanity for all of time, not just in this letter, but for all of time, to have a logical, appropriate, reasonable response to who he is. I want to look at this word for a second. Um, sacrifice. Actually, let's, let's talk about living sacrifice. Okay. So, this is this would be a term that would strike the original readers in like a, like an interesting way. It would be like they would totally resonate with the idea of sacrifice, but to put the word living on there would be totally different for them because what they were used to in regards to sacrifice has everything to do with death, not not life. And so, in case you don't know, like what was prescribed for them in in order to there there's a lot of different types of sacrifices. Um, some had to do with you know giving some of your food and things like that. There were there were some to do with animals, but like sort of the quintessential sacrifice would be um, in you know what they needed to do for their sins to be forgiven. They had to they had to bring their best lamb. Not like the the scraggly, like sickly, skinny one. They had to bring their best lamb to the tabernacle. And then they had to bring that lamb to the altar. And then they didn't just give it to the priest to do. They took the knife in one hand, in their own hand. And they took their own hand and put it on the head. And I, this is going to be gruesome, but this is, this is what it is. They put it on the head and they lifted that head and so the neck was revealed. And they sacrificed the animal. And it was this symbol of saying, with this hand, um, it's my sin that I'm putting upon you. And with this hand, as the death came, I am responsible for you dying. It's, it's my fault that you're dying. But blood was required for the forgiveness of sins. And so they would sacrifice these animals and pour out their blood and, and kill them for the sake of forgiveness. And so they knew that concept very well. Which, by the way, this is so awesome. This is why Jesus is called the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sin of the world. This is why he's called the last and final sacrifice because Jesus, as he poured out his blood, he took the place of all the animals that would have needed to be sacrificed that we no longer have to go to the temple and sacrifice an animal because our Lamb, the Lamb of God, has already been slain for us and we are all forgiven because of that sacrifice, because his blood is poured out once and for all. So it's just, it's just so beautiful. But, um, you know, the invitation here is no longer that they would kill something, but now in recognition, in light of the mercy of God, that, that God provided his own son to be killed, in light of that reality, Paul is saying what would really make sense the best way that, that we can worship God, that we can serve God, that we can respond to God now is not to, to die, but to live for Him. That we would offer our body, that we would offer our life, we would offer our time, we would offer all that we are as a sacrifice to Him, but that we would sacrifice through living. That we would, we would put aside our own selfish desires, we would put aside our own fleshly desires and sinful, you know, our own our own whatever we might pursue apart from him and that we would live wholeheartedly for him that, that is the response that makes sense in light of all that Paul talked about think about it chapter 1 that there's wrath that's been revealed from heaven but that the gospel is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes Chapter 2, that nobody's really righteous, not, none of us, no matter how much law we follow, none of us are righteous. That Chapter 3, that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Chapter 4, that he reminds us that Abraham was justified by faith, not by works. And chapter 5, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And chapter 6, that the wages of our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And chapter 7, that we don't have to be slaves to sin. Chapter 8, that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ, that 
that that God works all things together for the good for those who love him, that nothing can separate us from the love of God, neither height nor depth nor angels nor demons nor nothing. Chapter 9, that that God has a plan even for Israel and for, for us to be grafted in. And chapter 10, that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Chapter 11, that all of this is to the glory of God for everything is from him and to him and through him and to him be the glory forever amen and in light of all of that and thinking about all of that in response to all of that the only response that makes sense is that we would live our entire life for him isn't that true so he says I appeal to you therefore brothers by the mercies and light of all the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God this is your spiritual worship this is your reasonable response and so I want to invite you today please don't just tune out on me it's only been 10 minutes surely you have a few more minutes would you just take a few minutes five minutes spend some time in prayer and consider Is my life a worthy representation of who God is and His glory? Do I live my life in a reasonable way in response to what God has done for me? Does my life reflect the worship that He is truly worthy of? Am I living like a living sacrifice for a God that sacrificed everything to be with me? It's worthy of your time and consideration, so hope that you'll do that spend some time in prayer and ask the holy spirit for direction if there's anything he wants you to change in your world and commit your heart to him wholeheartedly let me pray for you lord i thank you for every person that's joined me today and we just pray as we reflect on this verse that you would speak to us that you would inflame in us a passion to serve you and live for you only to uh, to remember that you are worthy of everything and to invite us to live a life of a living sacrifice for you that's what we want to do so we commit ourselves to you And we ask now as we go to prayer that you speak to us if there's anything that we need to hear from you. In Jesus' name.